For over 20 years, Wi-Fi has been the predominant wireless technology for homes and businesses. Today, about 60% of the world mobile traffic is carried over Wi-Fi. Dr. Carlos Cordero is an Intel Fellow and Wireless Chief Technology Officer for the client group at Intel. He drives Intel's next-generation wireless technology strategy and standards and is a leading figure behind Wi-Fi 6 and the opening of the 6 GHz band for unlicensed operations. Carlos is also an IEEE Fellow and a globally recognized expert in wireless systems, software, standards and spectrum regulation. He is the chairman of the Wi-Fi Alliance Board, the industry forum that defines Wi-Fi. He received the prestigious Intel Inventor of the Year Award in 2016, the 2017 IEEE Standards Medallion, and many more. He holds over 400 patents, many of which are found in everyday Wi-Fi products today. In this episode, Carlos walks us through the rich history and the exciting future of Wi-Fi. This is Architecture All Access. Hi, my name is Carlos Cordero. Welcome to Architecture All Access, the history and future of Wi-Fi. In the early 2000s, as the popularity of laptop computers grew, user demand for mobile connectivity increased rapidly. Users wanted the freedom to connect easily from any location without bulky cables whether they were in the office, the airport, a classroom, or a conference room. Remember these blue and magenta signs? Back in 2003, you could find the Centrino signs at many hotspots. Intel Centrino technology for laptops ignited a mobile wireless revolution by integrating wireless capability into PCs. Personally, this mobile revolution inspired me to pursue Wi-Fi technology. I joined Intel in 2007 as a Chief Standards Architect, and I've been privileged to work alongside amazing engineers ever since, spearheading a technology that impacts people's lives every single day. It has also granted me a front row seat to witness the evolution of this amazing industry. We've come a long way since Centrino was first introduced, and I'm excited to walk you through the key innovations that have led us here. Wi-Fi is a name and logo developed by the Wi-Fi Alliance. Wi-Fi Alliance is the organization that certifies Wi-Fi products and that grants the Wi-Fi certified mark. The term Wi-Fi was introduced in the year 2000, but it took another five years for it to enter the Merriam-Webster dictionary. At the core of the Wi-Fi technology is a family of wireless standards, specified by the IEEE 802.11 Working Group. Starting in 1997, the IEEE 802.11 has introduced multiple generations of Wi-Fi from 802.11 AMB in 1999 to 802.11 AX in 2019. By the way, a quick reference to connect the Wi-Fi generations with the underlying 802.11 technologies. 802.11n is the basis of Wi-Fi 4. 802.11ac is the basis of Wi-Fi 5. 802.11ax is the basis of Wi-Fi 6. And then finally, 802.11b is the basis of Wi-Fi 7. Nowadays, many airline passengers cannot imagine a world with no Wi-Fi access on board. And it's interesting to note that the first in-flight Wi-Fi on a commercial aircraft was provided by Lufthansa in 2004. Through Boeing's in-flight connectivity service for their Munich to Los Angeles passengers. This was considered an incredible feat of technology at the time. Radio waves are part of the electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum is a finite and valuable resource. In the US, the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, oversees allocating the spectrum to various usages. Much of the spectrum is licensed to specific users such as telecommunication companies, television, and radio broadcasters, who pay a licensing fee to acquire and operate over a dedicated portion of the spectrum. 
Up until 1985, this spectrum was exclusively licensed. In 1985, the FCC ruling approved the 2.4 GHz band for unlicensed use. This momentous ruling paved the way for the birth of Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi operates in the unlicensed spectrum, which is a portion of the spectrum where anyone can operate, subject to certain regulatory constraints. A few years later, in 1988, the IEEE established the 802.11 Committee and thus began the journey of Wi-Fi technology. In 1997, the FCC designated additional spectrum in the 5 GHz frequency band for unlicensed use. Since then, the number of Wi-Fi devices in use today has grown to a staggering 16.4 billion devices. Therefore, the 2.4 and 5 GHz bands have become overcrowded. In a historic decision in 2020, the FCC opened additional spectrum for unlicensed use in the 6 GHz band. To grasp the significance of opening this new spectrum, note that the combined available spectrum in both the 2.4 and 5 GHz band is only 580 MHz, whereas the new 6 GHz band triples the available spectrum by adding another 1200 MHz. Historically, the demand for higher throughput and more data rate intensive applications have been the main drivers for the evolution of Wi-Fi standards. In the span of 23 years, the maximum achievable throughput has increased almost a thousand times, from 11 megabits per second in 802.11b to 9.6 gigabits per second in Wi-Fi 6, and continue with Wi-Fi 7, which promises 35 gigabits per second. Let's dive into the technological advances that have powered each generation of Wi-Fi. One major way to increase the data rate is to expand the channel bandwidth. Think of the communication channel as a multi-lane highway. The more number of lanes, the more vehicles can simultaneously use the highway without congestion. As we discussed before, there are three main segments of the spectrum that are allocated for unlicensed use. 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz, and 6 GHz. The 2.4 GHz band offers about 80 MHz of spectrum divided into 20 MHz channels. The 5 GHz band has a larger spectrum available, which allows for more flexible channelization up to 80 and 160 MHz. The recently added 6 GHz band offers 1200 MHz of spectrum. This is like a super highway with little to no congestion. Channel bandwidths up to 160 MHz are supported in this band. Let's summarize the expansion of channel bandwidth through the lens of Wi-Fi generations. The bandwidth supported in 802.11a is 20 MHz. 802.11n increases the bandwidth to 40 MHz. And 802.11ac allows 80 MHz and optionally 160 MHz. 802.11ax supports channel bandwidth up to 160 MHz. And finally, with the coming of the next generation 802.11be, channels with up to 320 MHz are being adopted. A distinguishing characteristic of a wireless communication channel is that there can be multiple paths between a transmitter and a receiver, creating fluctuations in the received signal strength over time and frequency. To create robustness against such channel variations, a technology called OFDM is often used. OFDM stands for Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplexing. It's a technique that divides the available transmission bandwidth into multiple narrow band subcarriers, each carrying independent information symbols. It's almost like dividing a shipping load among multiple smaller trucks, rather than using one large truck. Both shipping methods deliver the same cargo from source to destination if all goes well. But if an accident were to occur, utilizing multiple trucks means only a portion of the valuable cargo is damaged. Similarly, only a few subcarriers are impacted by deep channel fading or narrow band interference. Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiple Access, or FDMA, is an extension of OFDM from single user to multi-user. 
rather than allocating all the subcarriers to a single user, OFDMA allows subdividing the channel into smaller bands called resource units. Different resource units can serve different clients for better resource management in a crowded environment, for example. Let's go back to our truck analogy, but this time we are splitting our cargo among multiple shipping companies that will run different routes. So rather than following a single route from Portland to Los Angeles, for instance, we are shipping our smaller loads along multiple routes, thereby serving multiple destinations more efficiently. Multiple input, multiple output, or MIMO, describes a system which incorporates multiple transmit and multiple receive antennas. This technique is used to increase the transmission rate where each antenna transmits independent data streams. Or it can be used for robustness, where antennas send the same information over the wireless channel. Wi-Fi 4 supports up to 4x4 MIMO configurations, while Wi-Fi 5, 6, and 7 support up to 8x8 MIMO configurations. In most cases, an access point's throughput is constrained by what the client device can support. Most clients in the market today support either one or two special streams. For reasons such as low cost, the battery operation, or space or form factor constraints. Therefore, even if an access point is capable of supporting four or eight or 16 special streams, it can still send no more than two special streams to each client due to the client's limited number of antennas. Wi-Fi 5 uses a new technique called multi-user MIMO technology, referred to as multi-user MIMO in the downlink or downlink multi-user MIMO. Downlink MU MIMO enables multi-antenna access points to leverage the additional antennas to simultaneously transmit data to multiple clients. And therefore, decreasing the delay each user experiences and improving the overall network capacity. The new generation Wi-Fi 6 extends MU MIMO to the uplink, where a group of clients can simultaneously transmit to the access point, boosting the uplink throughput and efficiency. The usefulness of this feature is even more pronounced in today's landscape, where many people are relying on video conferencing for remote work and uplink performance is critical. The next generation of Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi 7, targets maximum throughputs of up to 35 gigabits per second. How do we plan to achieve such high throughput? Firstly, the channel bandwidth is doubled to 320 megahertz, doubling the data rate. Remember, as we discussed earlier, larger channel bandwidth translates to higher throughput. However, expanding the channel bandwidth alone is not sufficient to meet the needs of future networks. We need to introduce new features. One such feature that is currently being adopted into Wi-Fi 7 is multilink operation, or MLO. Future access points and client devices will have one, two, or three radios to access the 2.4, 5, and 6 gigahertz bands. MLO enables coordinated use of multiple links. MLO can be used to reduce latency by accessing the channel that becomes free first. It can be used to increase throughput by aggregating channels across multiple bands to transmit independent data streams. Or it can be used to improve reliability by transmitting the same stream on two independent channels. So now, let's take a peek at the future of networking and the trends that are emerging. There are about 16 billion Wi-Fi devices in use today, and device density is ever increasing. By 2023, it is estimated that an average person in the US will be connected to almost 14 devices, and that the average home will have 30 connected devices. At the same time, compute, storage, and analytics are shifting closer to the user and demanding faster response time. Meanwhile, ever more stringent requirements are originating from applications driven by the metaverse, gaming, industrial IoT, and XR-based smart technology, 
which demand reliable performance with bounded latency and jitter. To support the changing face of networks, future Wi-Fi needs to deliver deterministic operation. Deterministic operation is defined not just by high throughput, but most important by low deterministic latency with high reliability. The wireless channel quality is always changing over time and frequency due to factors such as interference and mobility. The next big challenge our engineers are tackling is enabling deterministic operation over a non-deterministic medium, which is the wireless channel. The future of Wi-Fi is bright for the users, the technology, and those who find their calling in this exciting field. I hope that you will join us in inventing the future of Wi-Fi.